on digging. Oh, I got a ray of bullet. Woo! Long before Sinatra, Springsteen, and Snooky, New Jersey was a hotbed of Revolutionary War history. We're here to find evidence of the last skirmish of the Revolutionary War. It was called the Battle of Cedar Bridge, a clash between New Jersey militia and loyalists to the British Crown. Some say it took place here at the historic Cedar Bridge Tavern. Cam, okay, I'm George. We meet up with historian Tim Hart. This guy is super passionate about the last skirmish of the Revolutionary War, and he thinks it happened right here. I'm absolutely convinced that on December 27, 1782, there was a skirmish within about 10 miles of this site, and it's the last documented land engagement of the American Revolution. There's a lot of confusion because there are at least five or six sites that have the words Cedar, Bridge, and Creek. If we can find ammunition from that battle, we can rewrite the history books. But right now, all we're finding is a bunch of 20th century junk. So it's time to rethink our tactics. According to our historian, the Patriot Militia, led by Captain Richard Shreve, were leaving the tavern when they were confronted by Captain John Bacon and his holdout band of loyalists. So KG and I decided to relive the skirmish to get a better idea of where these bullets could be hiding. It's December 27th, it's freezing out. We are talking 1782, two days after Christmas. And Shreve, his 28 men, are stopped here at this tavern. And in the meantime, Bacon and his men are tipped off that Shreve is in the tavern. So Shreve and his men, they get a drink, they're all warmed up by the fire, and they come out here, get to their horses, and they head toward the bridge to go home. But unbeknownst to them, Bacon and his men are waiting for him right there on the other side of the water. Boof. Nice shot, Bacon. In the meantime, all the loyalists that are Bacon's friends start creeping in on Shreves from the side and taking pop shots. If they'd have been shooting from this direction, then bullets would have been flying out to them woods. So assuming the battle actually happened here, the bullets should be further away from the tavern than where we've been detecting. So it's time to widen our search. I'm going to concentrate on the chestnut tree to the east of the tavern, and KG's going to check the woods north of the tavern. That could be a coin. That sounds awesome. And sure enough, I get what I'm listening for. Look at it. Oh! That's a fired round ball. Yeah, it is. This could be the last round ball fired of the Revolutionary War. Let's dig it up and see what it is. Right under the chestnut tree. It's right down in there, and it's pretty deep. Look at that. Oh, there it is. That is exactly what we want to find. It's another round ball. This is Rev. I'm telling you, you could tell. Look at this. This is what we've been waiting for all day. A round ball that's been shot. Another fire round ball, baby. It's a little mini round ball. Oh! And I'm just plucking round ball after round ball. Round ball, baby. So we know something definitely happened right here. I mean, that is awesome. That is incredible right there. The only way to prove these came out of old British muskets is to weigh them in. So we're going to check back with our historian, Tim Hart, and see if we actually got Ray of Round Balls. This is going to be an important part of history if this is the right weight. Well, let's see what it is. If these things were from an old British musket, they would weigh around 32 to 33 grams. 33.9. That's right on the yeah. money. These numbers settle right on the button, baby. KG and I just placed another piece into the puzzle of American history. We've been doing lots of studies here for the last 30, 40 years. This is the first thing that's come up that it actually could have been from that time period. So this is really pretty significant. We actually contributed to history, KG. Once again. <laughs> on digging. Oh, I got a rev bullet. Woo!